So we have been learning that there's a key to finding work-life balance, to be free from anxiety and stress, and experience deep inner joy in our walk with God. And for a while now, we have been reading Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 11, and verse 28 to verse 29. Let's look at this again. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, the key to experiencing this is a rested soul. When you have a soul that is at rest, you will discover the easy yoke and the light burden. The Apostle John makes it very clear that as your soul prospers, when it is nourished, when it is happy, when it is growing in God, every part of your life will prosper. So yes, by all means, you have to work hard. Be busy, but don't become overly busy that you're burning candles at both ends. Slow down your life a bit. Now remember, Jesus had a slow down spirituality. He chose to live an unhurried life. Turn to your neighbors on your left and right and say, you need to slow down a bit. Yeah. Learn to take regular Sabbath rest. One day in the week, just rest your mind. Just rest your body to enjoy God, to enjoy your family and friends. Learn to deepen your relationship with God and with those who are close to you. Then every once in a while, have a little bit of time for silence and solitude. Luke chapter 5 tells us Jesus has a rhythm of life. No matter how busy or successful he was, he often withdrew to a lonely place or to lonely places to pray. In the Gospels, Jesus was always practicing silence and solitude. So he has this constant rhythm of retreat and return, retreat and return, devotion and action. Imago day, miss your day. Now, what do you do as you retreat? What do you do in the presence of God? Number one, meditation. So I told you this a few weeks ago. What is meditation? This is simply applying your mind to the Word of God. Applying your mind to the Bible. Next to God Himself, there is nothing more important than the Bible. Just, just look at what the Bible says. Jesus says, the words I've spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. John 6 verse 63. Amen. So you read the Bible. You study the Bible. You think about it. You reflect on it. You ask yourself, how does this apply to my life? Maybe you want to memorize a verse or two or recite them aloud. Or you visualize yourself living in God's promises, imagining it coming to pass in your life. Or you start confessing it, praying out loud the Scripture, declaring the Word of God over your situation. All these are meditation. Every time you apply your mind to God's Word, you are meditating. Even right now, this evening, as you listen to the sermon, faith is rising up within you. Because, talk to me, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word, right? As you meditate, sitting in the service, the Holy Spirit is bringing life to your soul using the Word to nourish it, to make your soul live and, is, and make it alive. Turn to your neighbors on your left and right and say, the Word is giving you life. Yeah. So I can never overemphasize how important is the Word of God. Just look at what Job says. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. 
more than what you got to eat every single day. Every day, your soul must feed on God's Word. This is our daily bread. This is our daily sustenance. The Word gives you strength to overcome sin and bad habits. David says in Psalms 119 and verse 11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. The more you hide it, the more you meditate on it, the more power you have to overcome sin. Jeremiah says, when your words came, I ate them. That means I internalized them. I meditate on them. They were my joy and my soul's delight. This is how you come into joy, through the Word of God. So meditation is very important, but don't stop here. Meditation is like opening the door to the house of God. Once you are in, you must now enjoy fellowship with the God of the house, yeah? And this is the second thing, contemplation. I know it's a new word. I know for some of you, you have heard of meditation, but contemplation, well, you have a vague idea. When you are meditating, you're in full control. But when you are contemplating, you surrender that control to the Lord. Just like what Chai Chuen said, she went into her room, 9-11, <laughs> right? And she just sur surrendered control. No more reading the Bible, no more praying. You just sit there quietly before Him. You sit and you sit and you sit, learning to be still and know that He is God. Psalms 46 and verse 10, right? That He's there, that He loves you unconditionally and that he enjoys you, that you are the apple of his eye, that he loves you with an everlasting love. When Chai Chuan sat and waited on the Lord, suddenly she realized Jesus is there sitting by the bed. In meditation, you are very active because you're reading. You're studying, you're memorizing, you're reciting, you're analyzing, you're cross-referencing, looking at various translations. <laughs> you may even be very intense and be very loud because you're singing, you are praising, you are confessing, you are interceding, you are binding and loosing, declaring, prophesying. <laughs> but in contemplation, you stop all that. You just surrender. What do you do? You just surrender. You come into that presence, His presence, with no strings attached, no agenda, no words. You just wait and be still. From busily activating your faith, you are now resting in trust. Amen. You have transitioned from active faith to quiet trust. You're not in a spiritual warfare mode. You're not in a deliverance mode. You're not focusing on which demon to cast out. <laughs> You're not asking God to do this or that for you, or do this and that for this person, that person, for the whole world. <laughs> you simply quieten your soul to enjoy His presence, to receive His love, and soak yourself in that love. And then you release all your affections, all the affections in your heart back to God without words, just in loving communion. Robert Maholland says that in meditation, you are living for Christ, but in contemplation, you become aware Christ is living in you. You're no longer just engaged in the Word. You are now engaged in the God of the Word. His love will melt your heart. Often tears will begin to flow. Whenever love comes in, there's always a healing, a refreshing, a renewing. 
a deep, deep rest in your soul. Isaiah 40, we know this so well. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall soar with wings like eagles. Your soul will begin to soar because our soul is created to live by the breath of the Spirit. Jürgen Mottmann, a, a great theologian of the 20th century, he says, when you can meditate and contemplate regularly, a third thing happens. You will experience union. Meditation, contemplation, union. You become one with God in His love and in His likeness. You will come into the deep embrace of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And this is the prayer of Jesus Christ all along. John chapter 17, and it says in verse 21 to verse 23, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I in them and you in me, then the world will know that you have loved them even as you have loved me. Yeah. What is Jesus saying? Look, they are in us and I am in them and you, Father, are in me. So this is the desire of God all along, that we come into a loving communion, loving communion and union with Him. And this is the end goal of your salvation. This is the whole purpose of the redemption story. Jesus went to the cross, not just for your forgiveness, but in order for you to experience divine union. Look at John chapter 15, and look at verse five. And I'm reading from the Message Bible. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. When you are joined with me and I with you, the relation intimate and organic, the harvest is sure to be abundant. <laughs> what is Jesus saying? Don't worry about the harvest. Don't worry about your job or your business. Are you gonna earn money or not? Are you gonna get a big profit or not? Are you gonna get a huge dividend from your stocks and shares or not? Don't worry about your family and your future or your vision and your dream. Yes, they are all very important, but they are not your most important priority. I am the vine. You are the branches. You be in union with me, in loving intimacy, something that is organic. That means it's real. It's authentic. It's not fake. It's not for performance. That means the only time you worship is not in front of people. The only time you pray is not just in a prayer meeting. If you can have an authentic, intimate love, then the harvest is sure to be abundant. Oh, go ahead and give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. You notice what Jesus says? The harvest is sure. For sure you will find happiness and success in your work. For sure you will find happiness in your relationships. For sure you're gonna find success and harvest and happiness in your life. For sure. <laughs> if your priority is right, all these things will be added to you. Then Jesus continues to say, right? Look at verse 9 and 10. I've loved you the way my Father has loved me. Make yourselves at home in my love. If you keep my commands, you'll remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done. Keep my Father's commands and make myself at home in His love. Right here is the whole purpose of the gospel. 
not just for you to escape hell, but for you to be intimately at home in His love. Coming into a loving union with God. Hallelujah. Come on, guys, you want to clap? Let us give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbors and say, God wants to be in union with you. But God can't force this on you. He can make you love Him. You're not robots. You must freely choose for yourself. Love requires free will, otherwise it's not love anymore. You must freely choose to unbusy yourself and slow yourself down a bit, just a bit. I'm not asking you not to work. I'm not asking you to just go for a permanent holiday or take an early retirement, no. Slow down just a bit and learn to enjoy His presence. Enjoy His love and to love Him deeply from your heart. Only then will union take place. And only then will you be changed forever. Christianity, listen, Christianity is not a religion that is only concerned with what you know or what you think and what you believe. Oh, as long as what I think is correct, what I believe is correct, that's all I need. <laughs> then you might as well go and study philosophy. Yeah? No! This is a very shallow understanding of faith. This is a shallow understanding of the gospel. The whole purpose of salvation is so that we can come into a loving union with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. If we miss this, we miss the whole reason why we are even saved. So for me, it's a little bit like getting married to Son. It's great to know about Son to see her the first time, to work in the same office with her, to be in fellowship with her. It's great. But I can tell you it's even greater to date her and to have a romantic courtship. But it's nothing like being married to her. Coming into the intimate union when two persons become one flesh. For a man and a woman who are in love, the marriage union is the ultimate. It's the ultimate experience of the relationship. Jürgen Mottmann says, the closer and deeper the union, the more our soul is at home. The more the soul finds rest, and the greater is the bliss of love. The more intense is your inner joy, and there is infinite joy or passion, infinite never-ending joy because you're now coming into union with God. A God who doesn't just have love, but a God who is love. Mormon says, it is as if your soul is submerged into an infinite ocean of the Godhead. It is as if God is born anew in your soul. This is what the Bible means by seeing God face to face. There is so much love, it overwhelms you until it overflows out of you. At that moment, Mottman says, theosis happens. Remember this word? Turn to your neighbors and say, he talked about this a few years ago. <laughs> Everybody say theosis. theosis. You know, photosynthesis, <laughs> remember that word? Yeah, it means the process of light to grow a plant. It's the process. The early church fathers coined this word theosis. It means the process of becoming like Theo, the process of becoming like God. You are becoming one with God in love so full of God Himself, because God is love. You are being transformed into His likeness. It's like a loving couple being married for a very long time. My dad and my mom, they've been married for 72 years. When you are married that long, you start to look like each other. 
We say in Chinese, they have fu qi xiang, right? Yeah. I remember a while ago, son and I were overseas. We were in Hong Kong. And somebody said, are you brother and sister? I said, no, husband and wife. I said, oh, you look alike. <laughs> husband and wife start looking alike. They feel like one another. I look at Aris and Sandy, they look alike. <laughs> I look at Bob and Cindy, they look alike. And how many of you know, Kelvin and Cynthia, they are exactly alike, right? Same texture, same tone of speaking, same style of walking. <laughs> it is similar in our union with God. You are restored to God's image and you are beginning to change into His likeness. And this is how Christ's likeness really happened. <laughs> Not just by studying, studying, studying. If I study enough, I'm going to become like Christ. It's not just my self-discipline. If I discipline myself, if I don't, don't do this, and don't, I'm going to be like Christ. Those things help. Of course, you need to know the Word. You need to discipline yourself a bit. But the real secret is union with God. Amen. Theosis, Amen. becoming like God. Amen. Love is His fundamental nature. Love is basically who God is. The more you unite with God, the more your soul is perfected in His love, and you are forever changed. The more perfected in love you are, the holier you become. And the greater the power flows out of you. Remember this triangle? See, I've been trying to tell you all this for the last three years, but you don't get it, you know? God is love. God is holy. And God is almighty. You just cannot focus on the power part. <laughs> I know so many Christians just want to soak and soak and soak in God's presence for what? For power, not for God. You're missing the point. Yeah. This is not how it works. You ask the Holy Spirit to draw you closer and closer to God, to perfect love in you. You'll be so changed, so much like Jesus. So full of the fruit of the Spirit, there is holiness and great, great power will be released. But don't make power your focus. Don't make revival your focus. Don't make the harvest your focus. The harvest will surely come if you make your home in His love. The Bible says, make your greatest aim the love of God. John Wesley taught that love is the highest goal of every Christian. It must be. You invite the Holy Spirit to perfect love in you. And then life is the happiest, the most fulfilling, the most joyful. When you can experience union with God in His love, and you become a loving person like Him. Wesley says, Theosis, is love perfected in us. You are most perfect like God when you are most perfect in love. How many of you want to be more and more like Jesus? Put up your hands. I can't see you. How many of you want to be more like God? Put up your hands, right? You are most perfect like God, Wesley says, when you are most perfect in love. Turn to your neighbors and say, God wants to perfect love in you. I experienced a little of such union with God during my university days, a little bit of it. When I was studying at NUS, at the National University, the most fun thing for me to do at that time was not dating girls, or sports, or the school fraternity. Some of my friends were addicted to smoking, some to gambling, some to drinking, some addicted to sex. I was addicted to the Holy Spirit. Every day I would attend lectures and then study at the library until it closes at night. Then I would take two, sometimes three buses home because back then there was no MRT. <laughs> By the time I had a wash up, it would be around 10 p.m. in the night, 10 o'clock. I would take up my Bible, 
start reading it, and always I have a strong concordance by my side, trying to know God more through His Word. After a while, after all the reading, all the studying, I would take my guitar and worship the Lord. Often, I would just remove my watch and place it by the side of my bed, get down on my knees and close my eyes, and I began to pray. I would unload all my burdens and all my prayer requests to Him. Lord, help me in this. Lord, help me in that. Help my family. Help mom and dad. Help my youth group. Help my nation. I would pray and pray in tongues <laughs> until I was done. Until I have nothing more to say. And the next part was the best. I would be quiet and become still before God. And just enjoy waiting and lingering in His presence. Some days, He would speak in a still small voice in my heart. Other times, God was silent, but the Holy Spirit would just wash over me with His love. And I just soak in His love. Just soak and soak and soak. And the next time I opened my eyes, three hours would have passed. Four hours would have passed. Time flies. My mom would come and say, hey, boy, you better sleep. You have school the next day. Those were the best days growing up. It was in those days where I took a pen and I wrote, draw me or oh, draw me away. Messiah today, to your presence to stay. Jesus, please change me and mold me that I can be ever more true to thee. I was constantly living in his love, walking in his love, existing in his love, and then revival hit, <laughs> and our church was born. And with all the busyness of life, and ministry, and marriage, and family, those intimate moments with God got lesser and lesser and lesser. I was too busy growing our church and doing missions here, there, everywhere. I neglected the union with God that I needed for my soul. I was living life and doing ministry at 140 kilometers per hour. Every three days, I'm flying. I work 16 hours a day, seven days a week. I had no time for contemplation, for silence and solitude. And my union with God became fewer and fewer and far in between. But God loves me. And He always have a way to draw us back. So in the last decade of pain and hardship, softly and tenderly, Jesus was calling, calling me back to the secret place of intimacy. I know we all don't like challenging times, but it's only in the dry seasons of life that the roots of the tree gets deeper and deeper into the soil. It's only through suffering that your faith, your love, and your life in God grows deeper and deeper and deeper in Christ. Gently and patiently, the Holy Spirit drew me back to the secret place, to quietness, to be still, to silence and solitude. And as you know by now, my life began to change. I found myself slowing down. From 140 kilometers per hour, I began to live life at 40 kilometers per hour. And those years when I was away from you, I was living life at five kilometers per hour. Koske Koyoma says, that's the speed of God's love, five kilometers per hour. And the Holy Spirit began to change me and teach me how to be a person with zero anger, constant forgiveness, and unlimited patience. I'm still learning. Yeah. I'm still learning. Hallelujah. Amen. 
I'm still learning. I still have such a long, long way to go. But I can sense the Spirit perfecting love in me. Instead of worrying, having anxiety, there's now a deep inner joy. Jürgen Mottmann is right. He says, let me read to you what he says. <laughs> Only with union will the soul be finally at home. Love has found bliss. Passions end in infinite enjoyment. And there is diosis. Everyone say out loud. Say meditation. meditation. Kanye, you say meditation. meditation. Say contemplation. contemplation. Say union. union. Turn to your neighbors and say meditation, contemplation, union. Meditation. Come on, to the left and right. Just tell them that. Yeah. As we end, most of you here tonight, you are at the place of meditation. And you're very good at it. You're very strong at it. We are a faith church. We know how to confess, how to meditate, how to declare the word, how to study. In two weeks' time, we're going to have a big Bible study. But I want to encourage you tonight to take the next step. Slow down a bit. Just a bit. Come into contemplation. Spend some time alone with God, away from people, and be still before Him. Learn to be aware of the Holy Spirit inside you, that Christ is in you and you are in Christ. Learn to be very aware that God is love and He loves you very dearly and very deeply. Learn to open up your heart wider and wider and wider to Him. Learn to enjoy His love. And this cannot be rushed. Learn to be still and wait quietly in His presence. Put your phone away for a few minutes. Don't look at your emails, at your computer screen or your iPads. I promise you, your soul will find rest and your soul will finally be at home in His love. You will experience absolute bliss and the infinite enjoyment of God. There will be a heavenly joy, a joy unspeakable and full of glory. Depression, panic, anxiety will be a faint memory of the past. As your soul finally rests in God, you will find the easy yoke and the light burden. Tonight, how many of you want to go back to the secret place with God? Put up your hands, yeah. How many of you want to come into a loving union like this with God? Put up your hands. How many of you want the Holy Spirit to perfect love inside you? Put up your hands, yeah. Why don't we all stand on our feet right now? Hallelujah. Just stand up right now. Tonight we are in the presence of the Lord, in the presence of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is here. Just lift up your hands and worship Him. Surya la karabahade, la karabahade, la karabahade. Surya la karabahade, la karabahade, la karabahade. Surya la karabahade, la karabahade, la karabahade.
You know, I have no doubt a great harvest is coming. I can hear the sound of rain. I can see in the spirit a big harvest that is around the horizon. We have gone through six waves of revival as a people, as a church. But this next one will be different. This next one will be very little of us. There'll be a lot of God. This next one is going to be us entering the rest and God fighting the battles for us. At the end of the day, it's not how much we can preach the gospel to shine a salt and light in the campuses, in the marketplace, telling people how great the work of the cross, how great the forgiveness of sin, and all those things are true. At the end of the day, each one of us, we are loved by the Lord. And He misses us. He misses you. He misses meeting you in the secret place. He has blessed you with so much. Bless us with so much. And all of a sudden, life takes control. Success takes control. We can't slow down. We got to keep the momentum going. And it gets faster and faster, busier and busier and busier. And tonight, God is full of love. He's not here to put us on a guilt trip. He just loves us. He loves you. Like the wonderful father of the prodigal, he's just waiting, waiting for us to come home to him, to come home to his love. 
tonight how many of you you're willing to make a decision freely make a decision no pressure no pressure from anyone no pressure from your cell group from your pastor from your friends but something deep down in your soul is crying out for more because your soul is created to be alive to live and move and have your being only in God and there's a longing you miss Him and He misses you even more He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty tonight He's calling you patiently, gently. Come home. Come home to His love. Come for spiritual union. Come for a loving communion. Come and be still and know that I'm your God, I'm your Heavenly Father, that I love you, I'm for you. Come and receive my love. Come and see how wide my love is how long my love is how high how deep is my love of god a love that is beyond all human knowledge come and experience this love so that you can be filled to the measure of all the fullness of god and in that love when it's perfected then my god shall shall do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or ever imagine all the doing they are all secondary is to be still in the presence being in that love relationship with the Lord how many of you tonight and you you could be a cell group leader you could be a full-time church worker you could be very fervent you have not sinned against God you know you have obeyed every command just like the elder son, he says, I have always been with you. I have never disobeyed your command. And you've been so faithful and so disciplined. But like pastor, at one season of his life, living life at 140 kilometers an hour, no time even for a Sabbath rest. And I learned to slow down. And all of a sudden, everything changes. How many of you tonight, you say, Pastor, you say, God, God, that's me. God, I want to come home to the banquet. I, want to, I don't want to stand outside like the elder brother. I want to come home to your love. I want to come home to that lavish, extravagant love. I want to be perfected in that love. If that's you, wherever you are, when I count three, just lift up your hands. One, two, three. Lift up your hands all over this room. Shuduria la karabahanta dia la karabahari ala karabahara ala karabahara Suria la karabahanta dia la karabahari I just want to be where you are and I just want to be near your heart There is nothing like your love Jesus, there is nothing like your love. And I just want to be where you are. And I just want to be in your heart. There is nothing like your love. Jesus, there is to do tonight you know I'm on this series I'm gonna I have one more message and then we'll end this and we'll get ready for Easter but 
tonight, I just feel the drawing. Just feel the drawing. God is drawing you. All those that put up your hands. If it's fine with you, Pastor Bear, his heart, I tell you, I was doing so much, but yet so far from the perfect love of God. I was angry. I was worried all the time. I was anxious. It's not the life to live. All those that put up your hands, you know, I want you to come to the front if you can. But before you come, listen, I want you to come and make an altar before the Lord tonight. We have done this for a few weeks. So just come one more time. It's fine. You know, the word holy, it means unique. God, you're unique. You're special. God, you're not like my wife, my boyfriend, my girlfriend, my husband. You're not like my mom, my dad. You're special. Lord, I want to come into your presence because you're above anyone else. You're my creator. You're my father. When we sing holy, I want you to tell him you're special and I'm coming back to you. So all those that put up your hands, you just come right now from the front to the back. Just come right now. Just, just Don't form a line. Just come and stand as close as you can. Just come and stand as close as you can. Lee, you are You're coming back to the you secret place. Holy, holy, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. You are holy, holy. You are holy, holy. Just come wherever you are. Just come right now. Just come and stand as close as you can.
love wash away all the anger let his love give you the grace to forgive let his love give you the strength to persevere he's beautiful he's lovely he loves you Just give him all the affections of your heart. All the affections of your heart. He's perfecting love in you. Making you like him. I can get enough. Just wanna be where you are, and I just wanna be in your. There is nothing like your love. There is nothing like.
I want you to just say this prayer with Pastor for a moment. I want you to say, Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, I want to come back to the secret place. I want to come back to the secret place. To come into union with you. To come into union with you. Pour your love upon me. Pour your love upon me. Show me more of your love. Show me more of your love. Show me who you are. Show me Father, tonight I just pray, God. Tonight let there be healing. I just pray. Let there be healing of wounded hearts. Tonight I just pray those that are carrying heavy burdens, tonight there'll be a lifting up of burdens. Tonight I pray the weary will find rest in you. Tonight I pray that all those yoke will be broken in the name of Jesus. Every yoke of the devil will be broken in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I pray, oh God, for every fear and worry and panic anxiety. Lord, those spirit of heaviness will be lifted up, Lord, in your presence. Those that abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Lord, those that abide in the secret places of the Lord shall experience the shadow of the Almighty. Lord, tonight, come by your presence. Come by your power. Shuduria la carabahanteria la carabahanteria la suduria la carabahanteria la carabahanteria. Lord, tonight we bring all our burdens, all our financial burdens before you tonight. We bring all our worries before you tonight. Worries for our loved ones at home, for our children, for our parents, for those who are sick at home. Lord, we bring them all to you. For those who are disabled or handicapped at home, we bring them all to you. Shuduria la carabahanteria la carabahanteria la carabahanteria. Shuduria la carabahanteria la carabahanteria la carabahan. Lord, we give you all the worries of our future. Lord, we just give it all to you. Shuduria la carabahanteria la caraba. All our worries for the future, we give it all to you. Shuduria la car. You have a great hope and a great future for us. Shuduria, like those that put their trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. Lord, they shall not be moved. Shuduria, like Araba. Tonight, as we wait, Lord, we shall soar with wings like eagles. We get a soar in this life for the glory of God. Shuduria, like Araba, Hantaria, like Araba, Hantaria, like Araba, Hantaria. There is nothing like. Jesus, there is nothing like your love. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. You are holy. Holy. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Can we make one last prayer? I know time is gone, but just say this last prayer with me. Say, Dear Holy Spirit, Dear Holy Spirit, I gave you permission tonight. I gave you permission tonight to step on the brakes in my life. To step on the brakes of my life. Help me to slow down. Help me to slow down. To walk in the pace of love. To walk in the pace of love. Bring me back to the secret place. Bring me back to the secret place. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Let's just give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. That's right, give him praise tonight.
Come on, let's sing it one more time. Holy, holy, hallelujah. I just want you to experience a little bit of what it means to be in a secret place. If we can do it in this big arena with so many of you, can you imagine how wonderful it'll be when you're alone in your room? Learn to spend time. It will, it will cause you to have joy unspeakable. It will give you a new dimension. It's like God is born anew in your heart. Your experience of God will be totally different. You'll be changed. Amen. I want to thank all the pastors for responding. You know, you guys are men of God and women of God, and yet you're still so hungry for the Lord. And that's, that's how we want to be. Always hungry for God. Always hungry for God. Always. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Before you go tonight, will you just give your neighbors a big hug and say God is perfecting love in you. God bless you. Have a great week. See you next week.